everyone thank you for joining me now today I'd like to share with you a tutorial for my most requested card now I created this one when I launched my textures in the stars collection I hadn't realized I didn't have a video tutorial for this one and I get so many questions about it I know I did it live I think I may have done it on the TV shopping channel but here is the actual video I'm going to reproduce this card so I can show you exactly how I made it now as always everything I'm using is linked down below and I would really love it if you could subscribe to my channel while you're here if you haven't done already so this card has very much a bit of a sort of Harry Potter feel, spells, magic, that sort of thing. And that's also what the entire collection was about. Now there's more items than just these, but these are the stamps that I'm focusing on today to make this card. So like I say, my textures in the stars collection, we've got the constellations and the in the stars stamp sets. These are both still available and they will be linked below for you to find both in the UK and anywhere else in the world. Now I'm going to be using the same colours as I used. Now surprisingly I actually used Evergreen Val for this. It looks darker but that is the colour that I used. Um, I think I actually went on to a pale green cardstock with this one though so it was already green. So I'm probably going to go on to the white and just see what difference it makes. Uh, I've got black soot in the Distress Oxides as well. I've got black ink, I've got embossing ink, white embossing powder and some spare cardstock as well and I'm all going to be taking this onto a black card base. Okay, shall we get started? Now the first thing we need to do is not the most exciting part of the project but I do need to do some white embossing onto white cardstock. So for this I'm going to be using the stamp, uh, this one here and this is the one with the kind of crystal ball in it but I love the um, the clouds and the stars around the outside and also the frame. So I'm going to take this off and pop this inside my stamping platform. So I suppose this video should really be called How Quickly Can I Make a Mistake When Card Making? Because I've already made a mistake. I actually thought I was being really prepared by trimming my card base and mats down uh, in, in advance. But that just means that I can't stamp onto this now because I don't have a sticky mat at the moment in my stamping platform. I need to get a new one. So that means there's no way of me holding my paper down because the stamp fits perfectly on top. So I'm going to have to come to a fresh piece of white cardstock stamp in the middle of this and then cut it out afterwards. It's not a big deal but it's just something that um, it's worth you not noticing before you go ahead and recreate this project because of course if you want to stamp edge to edge you're gonna have to cut it down afterwards. So just popping that onto the middle of my white cardstock and lifting this up now just to remind you in case you think the end result looks a little bit different to the finished card I'm sure I went onto a pale green cardstock there. Um, but we'll see how this comes out. Now we're going to be heat embossing so I'm going to cover my white um, cardstock here and this is a smooth cardstock so it's perfect for stamping, heat embossing and ink blending on. I'm covering it with my anti-static powder bag just to make sure that the powder does go where I'd like it to go. Now I don't want the entire image to stamp. Uh, as I said there is a crystal ball in the centre of here. I'm not actually going to be using that so I'm just going to take a little bit of masking tape, low tack tape and I'm going to just place this over that crystal ball and the hands um, as tightly as possible. I want to make sure that I get everything else from the stamp inked up but I just don't want those particular parts of the image to get any of the embossing ink on it. So. Just a few strips of low tech tape. Um, what I will do though is keep this low tech tape afterwards because I don't throw anything away. Low tech tape lasts for ages. It usually goes onto my die cutting machine and I'll reuse it time and time again. So I've just created a bit of a mask there on my stamp. I'm now going to come in with my embossing ink and ink this entire stamp up so I can go over that masking tape or low tack tape, washi tape would work just as well as well. If you don't have a tape that you'd be happy to put on your stamp, you can just cut yourself a little bit of a mask, lay that over while you do your inking. But don't forget to make sure you do lift up that tape before you go ahead and stamp onto your cardstock. It will be sticky, it will be covered in the ink, but it should be easy enough to lift off. There we go. I say I'll pop that to the side and I'll use that again. Now to press this onto my white cardstock. 
I'm using the pressure tool here. This is from Craft Stash. It's only a few pounds. It's like less than five pounds. Uh, it's got the nice smooth felt surface, so it means stamping is so much easier. There we go. Now there must have been a little bit of ink left on my um, stamp because you can kind of see the image. Um, one bit I can't see though is this bottom corner, so I am just going to make sure that I have stamped that bit properly. I'm sure it's probably fine. That's a bit better. I can actually see that now. And now I'm going to take my white embossing powder, sprinkle this all over the frame. And we've got, of course, the phases of the moon there too, which I just think is a lovely image. And I can release this. Try not to spill my powder everywhere. Give it a shake to make sure it's covered. And then I'm going to pop that back into its pot. Just ensuring that in the centre here that there's no powder sticking where we don't want it. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to heat set that powder now. There we go. That's all set and nice and glossy. Now I can trim round the edge of this frame and I'm going to trim it really quite close. Okay, now we can reveal that emboss a little bit better. So let's just pop the pieces out the way that we don't need for now. We're going to bring in Evergreen Bow and Black Soot. I do have a blending brush for each colour of the Distress Ink and Oxide ranges, uh, but otherwise just one that you use for your greens would be fine. If you don't prefer a foam applicator, again, it's your choice. We just want to lay down some lovely thick colour here. I'm going to start in the centre, which is not usually where I would start when I'm ink blending. And I'm going to work my way out to the edges. Look how beautifully that picks up the white resist from the oxide. Now, if you just want to go with the one colour and fade it out to the back, to the edges, that would look absolutely stunning. But we're actually going to go a little different this time. We're going to be darkening the edges instead. So we kind of want this colour nearly all the way around. So I'm taking it almost to the edges on each side. Then I'm going to take my black soot. Now, black soot is uh, not really a black, not really a dark black in the oxides. It's actually more of a charcoal colour. And I'm just going to work this into the edges and the corners. Um, as dark as it will go, it won't go really black, but it'll be close enough. So I'm just going to go in no more than kind of an inch inwards. I'll work around the edge and then I'll work on blending that in in just a moment. There we go. So I've got this harsh line that I want to fade out. So I'm going to come back with what's left on my uh, evergreen bow brush and I'm going to blend that in there as well. Now you can keep working at this, making it darker if you prefer the darker, deeper colours or of course making it brighter with more green. It's entirely up to you which colours you use. But that's just faded that in really nicely. Okay, so now to take a piece of kitchen towel and brush off any excess that is on the white embossing. Make sure that stands out again. There we go, so we have our base. Now, looking at this one, I did this much darker with more black, but it doesn't matter. We have a little more of a variant here. So I'm going to pop my inks to the side, and now we're going to do some stamping. Now, the stamps from this set that I'm concentrating on are the arrows across the crescent moon there and the mountains, and um, that's got the kind of ring of planets around it as well. And then I am also going to use the word believe too. That's all we need for this project unbelievably. It's actually a really quick project. So I'm going to take these stamps, so that's all one, this one, and I'm going to stamp these with a black, just simply black on white. So I'm making sure that these are going on with a really strong striking black. So I'm using Versafine Claire because I want them to really stand out and be bold. So you can see then as I ink them how beautiful these stamps are. There's so much detail in them. I absolutely love them. Look at that perfect first time. So I'm now going to take my fussy cutting scissors and I'm going to trim these out. 
But before I start gluing my embellishments down, I'm going to pop this onto the black card base. Now this is an A6 card base, so it was an A5 piece of black cardstock that I've just simply folded in half. Pop that on there, and obviously it's symmetrical, it doesn't matter which way up you use it. Now I'm going to position these, now I did have to cut through there as you may have seen when I cut this bit out, I didn't have to, I could have taken my craft knife to it, but I thought, do you know what, if I put that at the top, that will be absolutely fine. Nobody's going to know that I've had to cut through there. So I'm going to actually glue these, this sort of um, solar system or ring of planets on uh, completely flat. So I'm just going to apply a blob of glue to the back of each of the circles on here. That should be enough to hold it. Now with the mountains, I want to add a little touch of colour. So I'm going to use the same evergreen bell ink. Just smooch a little bit onto a piece of plastic. And I've got a water brush here, so I'll pick a little bit up. I'm just going to paint the tips of the mountains here with this green. I'm not going crazy with it. I'm not being precise. I'm just adding a touch of colour. This is because they're so white. And then just fading out the water and blend that in with just some plain water a little, just like so. And that shouldn't take long to dry at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adhere this one on with a piece of foam tape to start raising up and giving us dimension. I've got myself a black foam square here and this is the perfect size to go on the back of this circle. And this is going to sit in the middle of our ring of planets just like so and then these arrows are going to overlap and go on here so I'm going to just cut up I'm going to use the foam pads again I'm going to use my scissors and cut these into smaller pieces because I want to be able to just put uh, some foam tape around the back of here and raise this one up as well but I can only put the tape on the larger areas so I'm going to place this quite high up on the card here, making sure that it's central. So I fix that first, that middle arrow first of all, and then the other two beside it, again, making sure that they are all straight too. Okay, so we're getting there. Now we need to put that sentiment on. And for this, I'm actually using a piece of acetate but it's heat resistant acetate, so I am able to stamp onto it and heat emboss. Now working with acetate isn't as scary as some people believe, so um, I always buy heat resistant acetate. I never buy normal acetate anymore because I can still use it as normal acetate. I can use it for shaker cards and things, but if I choose to heat emboss onto it, I've got that option as well. So just as I would with paper, I am going to stick this to the acetate hold it down inside my stamping platform. Um, I am going to also use my anti-static bag too to make sure that any specks of embossing powder that kind of fly off in different directions don't stick to the acetate. And then I'm going to ink this up with your usual Versamark embossing ink, clear embossing ink, whichever you prefer to use. I'm going to press onto this. Now, sometimes when you press the ink on, it will lift up the acetate underneath so just be wary of that so don't lift up and then re-stamp because the acetate may well have moved then as always just sprinkle your white powder on top and pop it back into the pot we do tend to get a bit more static with this but a few a few little taps and there we go absolutely perfect now i just need to uh, heat set that again and again, I'm going to do it in the normal way. The only difference is because I've got a small piece here, I am going to hold it with some tweezers so that I don't burn my fingers. There we go, really, really quick. So then I'm going to take my um, butter cutting scissors and just trim around this. And again, another kind of common misconception with acetate is that it's hard to adhere. Now, I usually use the same glue as I use for my paper crafts, but I just ensure that I put the glue 
behind where any stamping or heat embossing is just to make sure that it can't be seen through and I'm going to pop this just over the arrows there so it's only going to stick to the arrows I've actually put too much glue on I didn't need it on the end letters but I have it I just went ahead and did that anyway and there we go so that will take longer than usual to dry but um, I'm happy to sit that that's why I do this bit last it can just sit there so there's the card you've seen me making for that's the original one you see that's dried and that's gone a little bit more cloudy I probably used I did go in a bit more with the black I think on that one so um, the white then stands out a bit more you could actually go back and add some more black to this one but it's very very similar and you kind of get the idea so hopefully that has um, made you happy if you're one of those people who messaged me and asked where they can see a tutorial for this particular card. So as I say, everything I've used is linked down below. I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you back here again for more tutorials like this soon. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.